This video is about Mythic Alpha and she is the very last gold Mythic character that you can get in the museum once the Conquest update goes live with your Mythic tokens. It will require 200 Mythic tokens to get her. That's an accumulative amount, so like you're not spending them on other Mythics. It's just once you get to 200, you can get Alpha as long as you unlock enough Mythic keys by doing the world map. You'll be able to get some other goodies on top, including silver Mythic choice crates, 30 Berts and some military supplies, but obviously the Gold Mythic Alpha is the big prize here. Let's see what her kit has in store. Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video we're going to be taking a first look at Alpha who is going to be getting a Mythic character once the Conquest update goes live. As we can see on her visuals on the right hand side, she looks like you would expect Alpha to look. She is the leader of the whisperers and she is wearing someone else's face you know something i don't think i ever expected myself to to really say in a video game but it is going to be the case she is holding that dagger across her chest and we'll see what the animation is like oh i like that i actually like that quite a lot that's a new animation i believe i do like that one she has got the shotgun in her other hand but she is going to be attacking with that fast weapon, so she is obviously a fast character. On the left-hand side, we can see her kind of like she's walking towards you. And you see the knife in her hand, you see the iconography on the belt. Visually looks great. She has got all the walkers in the background, so it looks like she's like bringing the herd. I actually like this quite a lot. If we look at her stats as a tier 5 level 600 gold mythic character, she has got 14,215 attack. 13,240 defense and 13,325 HP. She is a fast character. Like we saw, she is going to prioritize the dagger over the shotgun. She is considered a damage dealer, a mythic character, of course, and she is no doubt part of the Whisperers as her allegiance. She is the second character to come out as a Whisperer. We have had Beta as a mythic character already. Now we'll go across to her Adrenaline Rush and it is called Death and Disease. It's a 66 AP cost rush, deal 400% damage to one enemy, one other enemy gets 60% infection and 50% heal reduction for two turns. So I actually like this quite a lot. Any you know character that would do targeted damage and would do a follow-up effect, if it goes to the character that they're doing it to, a lot of the time it's not going to last very long. A big hit and infection it seems like a kind of a waste whereas this one would be you potentially could take a character out or really really damage them and someone who's got full hp would get the infection on top and then obviously they'll get the heal reduction now 50 percent won't stop revives but it will stop healing and it while it won't stop all the healing it is a 60 percent infection so that is actually quite high it's not you know those really low 15 to 20 percent infections that we've seen in the past which are like quite easy to heal even with no fast healing weapon. So I don't think this is going to be as easy to recover from, even if it was just 60% infection, but that 50% heal reduction on top is going to make it even more difficult. Okay, so we are going to be on the rush turn and I can focus one of the tough characters because obviously Alpha is a fast character and I will do heavy damage against them, more likely to take them out with the actual rush. And then one of the other two remaining characters in this case should get the infection. So I'm going to focus Abraham because he's not full HP. This is, makes good sense. We're going to get the Russian. It's going to do that new animation. Going for the jugular. It does take him out and someone's going to get infection. It is going to be Princess. So Princess has a 60% infection and I like this a lot. Obviously, Mythic characters have tons of HP. But it doesn't matter how much HP they have if they've got infection. It's an instant takedown once that wears off. So quite a nice rush indeed. Two character potential takedown in this case. Now you can nuke one and a potential follow-up of 60% infection on other. I think this is one of the more powerful rushes that I've seen and it can work on attack and defense just as well. For instance, if you were to put her on a defense team, you just gear her a bit more defensively and you just utilize the infection a little bit more. And then on attack, you can gear her a bit more offensively just so you can actually take someone out with that rush and the infection just will beat Leo, play havoc. It'll be much more effective from a defense team because attack teams, again, don't really have too many medics. Generally, it's not the way you normally would attack, but the medics are all over the place on defense teams. So you could you have to utilize that percentage damage as, as much as possible and just hope that the infection is a, a nice big bonus. Now, she has, of course, got a signature move and it is a turn one signature move. It is called Infected Slash. 
Initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of two turns, number of uses right now of 999. Attack an enemy for 150% damage, that enemy gets 60% infection for two turns. So it's pretty much identical to the rush except it is reduced damage and the enemy that she attacks gets the infection. The only difference here of course is that the signature moves can crit, the signature moves can take advantage of any weapon bonus, so if she did have like a double attack weapon, you'd be able to do a double attack. If you did have the impair on attack weapon, you could impair someone when you attacked. I think it's the diamond knife on a fast character, so there is a potential to get some controlling or extra damage because of that. The infection is nice, of course, 150% isn't going to do the same sort of damage that a 400% rush is going to do, but because it can crit, you can potentially manipulate that with combat mods, maybe her passives can play into it as well it should still do a reasonable amount of damage so straight away we are on turn one i'm just going to click abraham and we're going to do her signature move straight away and as you can see it does 4,000 damage instantly i did get reflected because he has got a reflect mod on him from a previous test that's the same things with basic attacks signature moves you can get reflected but you can see that he has got now the 60 percent infection on him for two turns and that is obviously really powerful off turn one because a defense team will generally rush on turn three so by the end of his second turn which is after his signature move well actually not in abraham's case because he doesn't have a signature move for turn two but he would actually just get taken out instantly no rush no signature move and you can counter particular characters really nice this way so obviously this signature move is very powerful on attack and potentially defense as well. On defense, again, same sort of deal with the rush. You can utilize it for the infection side of things, not just obviously the percentage damage. It is like traders effectively, turn one. It has got a two turn cooldown, however, but it is going to be a turn one. The difference is it's a 60% infection versus traders 15%. So it's going to be much harder to survive for an attacking character. Now it does play into other parts of her kit, which we will sort of loop back into on the signature move in a minute. So it does actually increase the potential of this signature move quite drastically for attack teams. But first we'll go across to her passive abilities. These are the obviously the mythic abilities that characters will have. They're passives. She is a damage dealer, so she will get agility, 10% increase to basic attack damage. This will obviously give her a boost to her signature move but not her rush because it is a, a single target, just big hit. The second passive she's got is called No Quarter. When attacking targets with the Medic roll, plus 20% attack. I like this. She kind of counters what can, you know, remove the infection. She's sort of that, I don't know, Medic Assassin. And there is potential that she could, you know, other characters could come in in, in the future with like Damage Dealer Assassin, you know, Damage Dealer um, gets more damage taken or support character gets more damage taken maybe even tank you know so that's actually really interesting or maybe even like takes less damage from a damage dealer you know like a tank role could come in that's uh, very interesting little new things are being added on a couple of these characters the next passive is called ruthless when attacking targets with an infection status get 40 crit now I don't think this is actually that fantastic just because you're going to be able to do this on your turn two basic attack and your turn four signature move. Your rush isn't going to take any bonus from this and your turn one signature move will not take any bonus from this because the infection will not be on the character already or the rush just will not be able to crit. So it isn't amazing, but it obviously it isn't terrible. It's just a little bit of a bonus. The last one, however, multitasking when performing the headhunter specialist skill, spoiler alert, 15% chance one other enemy gets crosshairs this is really really good and if it works exactly like the specialist skill so it's like crosshairs from the specialist skill it will last for three turns as well so it is turn one and i am going to use my signature move because it can crit i might as well i'm going to target princess i am going to hit the crit and you could see the green pop up on my name said enemy crosshairs it went on to Abraham as well, and as you can see, they both got a three-turn crosshairs. The big bonus of it hitting with the signature move off of turn one, even if it doesn't go with the 15% to another character, is when Princess gets taken down by the infection, she is decapped. That is a really nice little combo off the first turn signature move. However, with Abraham, the rest of my characters could pile up the damage onto him, and when they take him out, he will also be decapped. 
So really nice potential here. Obviously, it's not going to happen every time. I did have to, you know, do this little test a good five or so times to actually make it so that it happened. 15% is not great, but it's going to be a nice little bonus on top. And honestly, I kind of like that. I kind of like the, you know, positive potential, even if it's low potential on these passives. One of them being like that. So every now and again, you get something really nice happen. That is actually kind of cool. And this one's actually quite nice. You know, crosshairs works extremely well. If we go across to the special skill, I'm sure a lot of you know where it is. If this character performs a critical hit on an enemy, the enemy gets crosshairs for three turns. When a character has crosshairs, if they are taken out, they will be decapped. Some people think it's stronger than decap itself. I kind of would agree because the difference between crosshairs and decap is anyone can take down a character who has got crosshairs on them whereas the person who has decap on a special skill has to get that final hit and sometimes the character gets taken out and sometimes the character just doesn't hit the mark and doesn't do enough damage so i like crosshairs a lot it does last for three turns off of headhunter and as we saw on that passive the extra one 15 percent of the time not a great amount of time but the extra one will also last three turns now she has got an attached weapon and it is Alpha's Precise Knife. This is it in its most base form, but it'll most likely eventually look like the dagger you can see on the left hand side, where it's got a nice like gold hilt and a little bit of gold up the blade, red handle, and it looks pretty nice on the left hand side on her main art. It will eventually get there. Let me just bring this down. It'll eventually get there where it will look like that. But right now it's silver. Once it gets to, you know, legendary and beyond, that's when it's going to look pretty nice. The stats on base are 30 crit and a medium bonus to AP when attacking. It is currently a 5-star weapon, but I had to 5-star it to put a different weapon in her hands for the tests. I'm not a big fan of crit on the base, just because crit is not that powerful versus a percentage attack boost. So if you did get this weapon, I would 100% recommend, if you on the base weapon at least, going for an attack percentage boost just to amplify her damage as much as possible. If you want to go for crit, 4 slot 1535 or combat mods or both. So this is Alpha and I actually like this character a lot. I had a lot of fun running these tests versus some of the other characters where I was just like running through and it was it was kind of difficult to get things going. This character just everything just seemed to click really quickly and I like that a lot. Her animation as well. I that's so nice. I really hope they do these nice unique animations in the future. This this is basically her going for the jugular. That's the swing. That is it is pretty dirty but I do like it a lot. Uh, it just she just looks cool. She looks cool. Her kit's nice. It's gonna be quite effective And like I said, I think she could potentially have some room on both defense or Attack, but if you obviously had her on defense You'd have to gear her really defensively and that may reduce her potential on an attack team So I mean you could potentially get two alphas and just use one on one team and one on the other You can't use two alphas on the same team You can't use two of any character on the same team That is obviously something that's coming in with conquest So if you did get a duplicate one defensive alpha and one offensive alpha could be the way to go but do give me your thoughts on Alpha as a mythic character. She is obviously going to be coming to Conquest. You saw in the intro about her being in the museum as well. I would definitely say she looks worth going for. I, I want her more now than ever, honestly. And she is the, probably the character I'm gunning for just to get the 200 mythic tokens in the museum to get my hands on this character. She looks very powerful, a lot of fun, and just one of my favorite characters for sure. But do leave your comments down below. That is going to be the end of my video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. If you are new to my channel, please think about hitting subscribe i want to say thank you very much to all my subscribers because i did recently hit 13,000, and that is obviously quite a big deal for me so thank you so much if you haven't got your notifications turned on however why well, might want to think about turning them on so you get told when my videos go live when my live streams start up but that is the end of this video today guys i want to thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving